and welcome. This is Melissa Armo with the Stock Swoosh and reviewing the Stock Swoosh Show Live Trading Room Advanced Trader Tracking, which is an advanced risk. So the risk per trade is $2,500 per trade. And I say that because I want people to know and understand that you can risk less if you want to. So $2,500 is nothing to sneeze at, but it is definitely, definitely, definitely an advanced risk. Um, but you can risk $500 a trade if you want. You could risk $100 a trade if you want. Uh, it's really up to you, but it should be based on the size of your account. And not only that, the, the amount that you risk per trade has to be the same and equal to every trade you take. So you can't risk $500 in one trade, $2,500 another trade. Follow me? So if you're going to say 500, it's 500, 500, 500. Or if it's 2,500, it's 2,500, 2,500, 2,500. And you want to make sure that it's equal or close to equal so your results are accurate, okay? But so far, 2020 has been a great start to the year. This is January through beginning of April, first week of April, 301,703. So the year's off to a good start, and I've been very, very focused this year. If you have any questions, email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com or call me at 929-3200-GAP. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So it's earnings season starting one week. Cannot wait. Second quarter earnings season is going to be big this year for volatility, for, for momentum, and specifically for gaps, because we're going to have a lot of gaps. We usually have a lot of gaps in earnings season, but I think we're going to have some big gaps and some big movers this second quarter. And unfortunately, it's just because of what's happening in the pandemic. But I think it's going to make for some great volatility and some great trading. So I'm really looking forward to it. Anyways, to start off the calendar, Year here started off in January, was off. Then calm, required a retake. First trade was a loser, second one break even. You'll see, I teach that in the class about retakes. Uh, and again, these are all day trades. Uh, Boeing worked in the sixth. Tessa required a retake. Really nice move though in the second move. Eighth was WBA, which was a loser. Spy and Q's winners. KSS was a winner in the ninth. Tenth was Foot Locker, which was a loser. Six was a loser, first one, nice trade, and the second one, winner. EXAX was on the 13th, nice winner. And most of these trades are shorts, just so you know. I specifically like to focus on the downside. Uh, now, as far as going long, I will go long if there isn't any good shorts, but I prefer, <coughs> I prefer to short. WFC was a loser on the 14th. JPM was a loser. 15th was off. Apple was a loser. Spy winner, Q's winner. Apple second trade was a winner. Spy was a winner, Q's winner. And IBM loser on the 17th, 20th closed. UAL was a winner on the 21st and 22nd, no trades. So I get up every morning applying my system to finding the best stock to trade. But if there isn't a good gap, then I may not do anything. So I mean, that's, I just never know till I get up. On the 23rd was the Diamonds, required a retake. One loser, one winner. CMCX. SA was a winner, DFS was a winner on the 24th, 27th win lost, both trades, DFS was a winner, SPY break even, AL loser, and SPY big winner. 28th MMM was break even, second trade winner, PFB two times winner, and AMD was a winner on the 29th. 30th was Facebook loser, Microsoft loser, Cree winner, DD big winner, nice gap. 31st was WWE, that just did not work, CVX won, and Facebook again. <laughs> and then getting into February was uh, into really the first quarter earnings season. The third was no trades. Disney was a loser on the fourth. Microsoft winner, big winner. Fifth was MRK. Ford was a little one. Snap was a nice winner on the fifth. Sixth was TWLL. Loser, QCOM loser, Microsoft winner. Seventh was Goose loser, Marvell winner, T2 winner. Lily was a loser, T2 winner, Twitter big winner on the 10th. UA, second one worked, Q's was a winner, and Lyft was a winner on the 12th. 13th was NTAP loss, Cisco loss, NTAP just didn't work. 14th was Yelp didn't work, Cisco worked, EXPE took three trades in that, two losers, one winner. CAG worked on the 18th, SPY was a winner, Apple winner. 20th was LB, lost, six loss, Apple, SPY didn't work. Then BA was break even, MS was a winner, six loser, Viacom winner, AN winner, and STMP was a winner. 21st was Viacom loser, FSLR winner, and BA was a winner. A lot of trades in BA this year, actually. 
Now that I look back, day trades and options. Uh, the 24th was AAL, winner. EXAX was a winner on the 25th. Tone was a winner on the 26th. 27 SPY loss, Q's loss, Microsoft loss, AAL loss, break even, CCL winner, SPY winner, Q's winner, BA winner twice. BYND, we played a lot towards the end of last year. That was a winner on the 28th. Twitter lost two trades, then one. CCL was a loser, Q's loser, CCL winner twice. CCL was a winner the next day, follow through. BA, big winner on the 5th. Microsoft, huge one on the 6th. SPY and BA loss, the second trade in the SPY worked. No trades on the 9th, stitch fix loss, BA, huge winner. SPY loss, SPY won, BA, big winner. Again, the BA. BA, I have to count up all the BAs. And the Q's winner on the 11th. 12th and 13th off from close 16th through 20th. SPY was a winner. 24th, 25th, and 26th, no trades. 27th was BA. And actually, that was the week that week, the 24th, the 26th was the week the market was getting halted like every day. Remember that? It was a crazy week. So just played it conservative that week. 27th, BA was a nice winner. CCL was a winner on the 30th. BA, good winner on the 31st. April then started out very well. CCL won, RCL won, JPM won. Second trade actually was a winner. First one was a loser. BA lost. And GS lost on those two. And then BA, another one, big winner. Second was CCL again. BA twice. Worked in the second try. BA was a winner. SPY winner on the third and closed from 4-4 four, four to 4-9. Four, so back at it now with earnings season in one week and cannot wait to see what happens for the rest of April. So what is an advanced trader risk? As I said earlier, it's an average of $2,500 per trade, but that is not required to trade my system. You can risk, you could take... 100 shares if you want you know you could risk less than $100 but I think $100 is an okay beginner risk but you can trade with a proprietary day trading account with 10 to 1 margin with a 2500 starter account or at a, at a retail account the amount minimum is 4 to 1 on margin with a 25,000 so your cash amount is going to determine not the type of account you have on margin really how much you risk per trade and if you have questions about that, just ask me. And it really also depends on how well you know the system, how long you've been trading with me. So for example, if you have a $40 stock price with 200 shares, that requires 8,000 in buying power, not 8,000 in cash, it's BP. That's what I'm talking about with margin. So you can take that with a $2,500 prop account because on a 10 to one margin, you'd have 8,000 in buying power. Do you follow me? So if the stock moves a dollar in your direction, you can make 200 bucks. So, and $200 a day is $1,000 a week. And that's, you know, uh, a, a nice amount of money for someone that only has a starter account of $2,500, okay? So you'd almost be doubling your, your cash each week on average, okay? Some weeks um, you, could, you could make more. I'm just looking at an average of a dollar move and with just 200 shares. Sometimes you'd be able to take more than 200 shares. Sometimes the stop might be big that you'd have to take only 100 shares. So you can day trade with a beginner account and risk the only difference is really your share size is smaller with a beginner account, which again, to me is common sense. You, you just have to know how to take the trades and what stocks to be watching. But you can make money in anything you do if you have a good system as far as the amount of risk, whether it's one share, one contract, or 10,000. You're not gonna make money even with a big account if you don't have a good system. Just like you can make money with a with a small account if you have a good system, and particularly a good mentor or someone calling the trades like me, but you can grow a small account into a larger account. So this is something that you wanna learn how to do and wanna do, and work for yourself. I mean, now is just a great time to get into it because a lot of people are home. So I teach a class, it's called the Golden Gap Course. It's everything that I know about trading gaps and rating gaps in the Golden Gap system. You learn the 26 points in the system in the class. It's April 18th and 19th from 9 to 5. Class tuition is $69.99. Email me if you want to sign up. The class is online. The combo deal is the trends and the golden gap. You do both classes in April. You save $500 at $74.99. Again, all classes are online. You can change what you're doing for your job. You can change what your trading strategy is if you've been losing so far in the first four months of this year. Don't wait. A lot of people think they know how to make money in the market and they flat out don't. They think they do if they even take one trade that they make money. It's the consistency which counts. 
It's a consistency which is gonna get you somewhere that you're actually gonna be able to do this for a career and make money. I have a consistent system and a high win ratio system and I'm calling the trades live and that's very helpful for people. If you're interested in signing up for the class in April, it's a great side to join, a time to join because of earnings season. And again, unfortunately with the, with the pandemic, it's gonna make a lot of volatility for April and May. And, uh, and if you know how to trade it, which I do, you're gonna be able to capitalize on it in, in this time. So email me if you have questions at melissa at the stock Have a great and safe weekend, everyone.